Welcome to this set of videos in which uh, I'm going to try and show you how I made this, I think, rather cool LED illuminated letter. Um, and this is uh, 3D printed, so hopefully you can see here this main 3D extruded form is 3D printed. This front it's partially transparent acrylic purple sheet is laser cut. Um, and the whole thing is powered via USB. So I've got a, I think this is a mini USB plug. This is quite an old style USB plug. I'd normally go for micro, uh, which is the kind of USB plug you get for the kind of 2015 or earlier um, smartphones. Uh, of course, everything is USB-C these days, but uh, this is this is going back a bit, this format here. And I use this because I'd run out of micro USB, so I used a mini USB socket instead. Anyway, the uh, the, the versions that uh, you create, I would suggest we use MIDI. So that's what I'm trying to make here. It's got LEDs laid out inside. Um, I've got some um, some photographs of uh, how I, I put this together. Um, and uh, initially, I'm going to talk about making this S. Um, and then what I plan to do is uh, look at making some, some other letters and perhaps a, a more interesting font. Um, just to point out here, I'm not quite content with what's happening down here. This, in fact, is the uh, mini USB uh, socket here, which actually just just shows through, unfortunately. So that's something that I need to to try and fix as I as I do my my updated video tutorials for this for this new set. Okay, so that's what I'm going to try to create. And my my initial goal here. Um, is to show you how I how I basically put that S together. Um, now, of course, well, I'm using 2D Design here, um, and first of all, let's just format this. I do this with all my 2D Design videos. I'm going to right-click on Gridlock on the top right corner there. Um, I hate this dotted grid. I want to go for uh, a five millimeter grid. It gives me a little bit more resolution to work with. I'm going to go for lines in this pale blue color, which I think works really well. Uh, click on OK, and I'm good to go. And I've got gridlock turned on there. Okay, so I I'm ready to go. Um, now I'm going to be using 2D Design here to laser cut the uh, the acrylic sheet here that went in front. Uh, but I'm going to be using um, Fusion 360 to create the 3D print. Now this is important um, because I've played around with the two. I've got uh, I've got Fusion. 360 here um, and it is possible of course to add text to Fusion 360 you can see the option there in the sketch menu as I'm editing this sketch and it's also possible in 2D Design to also add text in there as well um, but I find that uh, it, it doesn't quite work um, there's slight discrepancies and also I wanted this whole experience to be a lot more kind of engineering um, and a lot more precise so that's why I'm not going to be using a font uh, for this I'm, I'm instead going to be constructing um, my my S here uh, using a series of polylines and Bezier curves and circles of very specific dimensions and that is going to be uh, I think a lot more interesting as a process too. So this S is a nice example because basically it's made from circles and arcs. You'll see how it all works out. So I'm going to move that image there into my extended desktop and I'm going to recreate this on 2D Design. Um, so here we go. Now, first things first here, what I'm going to do is start with the rectangle tool. Uh, and I'm actually going to click in this top left corner here and I'm going to drag out a box. And I'm going to make this exactly 150 millimeters in width and 150 millimeters in height. Remember, I can use my relative grid reference down here, which is currently blank. But when I move my mouse onto the drawing area, you'll see some numbers appear. So I want to go 150 in the X there and I go down here 150 because of course the origin is the bottom left so in the Y axis I'm actually going negative down from that top left position. Okay so that is now defining the maximum uh, shape I can make my 3D print. I could obviously laser cut bigger than this um, but uh, for our 3D printer it will go a little bit bigger but I'm going to specify here for this a maximum size of 150 by 150 millimeters. In fact, the model I was just showing you earlier here, this is actually this is actually slightly smaller than that, which you will see as I as I create it. 
Okay, so um, how am I going to do this? I might, I, you know what, I might actually bring this across. Let's actually bring it across like that. Let's bring that palette back there. And let's see if I can actually use this and perhaps zoom in a bit here as well. Let's bring that menu across. Why isn't that just, oh, for some reason, I can't make the Auto Desk Fusion 360 window any smaller there, which is a bit strange. Okay, let's come to the zoom in button here. Let's zoom in on this. Now I can see them both side by side. So I want to have, I'm going to start off with identifying these two center points of these circles. Um, and they are 55 millimeters apart. So let's just get a dimension line here. And this is another reason why I like a 5 millimeter grid. Uh, let's now just put in there 55 millimeters. So again, I'm looking down here from my relative diff distance. And I want that to be 55 negative in this particular case because again I'm going against the Y and there's 55. Now let's get some circles. Now rather than just going with a standard circle, and this is annoying because when I hold the mouse button down the menu expands to the left and it was expanding off my extended desktop. If I come along to the second option here which is draw a circle with a given center and radius, so release the mouse button. Now this has a, a diameter of 30 so my radius here wants to be half that, 15 and I'm going to draw a circle right there. Now notice that the dimension line there isn't, isn't quite stuck into the grid. That That's because when I drew that dimension line, when I drew that dimension line, it does actually step slightly off the point that you're referring to. So that was the point my dimension line was referring to. Uh, let's just do that again because I've got another center of a circle down here. And then I've got this larger circle, which is the external profile of the S that has a diameter of 80. So I'm going to uh, right click on my circle settings and I want to put that as a radius of 40. And again, I'm going to click with my center point there and my center point there. So when I, when I designed this, I designed it hopefully you can see here so that this this uh, the arc here this circle basically intersects with the smaller circle which allows me then to continue the profile of the S um, and that basically is my S profile created isn't it um, let's just put a few dimension lines in there so it kind of you know looks similar to what I'm seeing there in Fusion 360 uh, so I'm going to come to let's have a diameter tool there so let's specify that as being diameter 80 this is going to be diameter 30. Uh, do I need to do the same here? Why not? There, there. Uh, that, you know, that's a fully defined sketch in my mind. Okay, so now what am I going to do with this? Let's go to my select tool again. Well, what I'm going to do now actually is I'm going to select all of this because I want to keep that. Well, the way that I work anyway, I want to keep it. Uh, and I'm going to just move that to the side here of my drawing area. It's going to move it across. Uh, let's just zoom out a little bit here. Um, and I want to get, because that's my original structure, um, and now I'm going to select and then shift select for multiple parts here, I'm going to select all those parts there, control C, control V, I'm going to bring them in, and I'm going to hack, I'm going to hack into this, so I keep my original data there, and this is going to be my modified version. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to do, drat, uh, line tool, I was supposed to draw a line across here, which is going to represent this terminal part of the the top stroke of the S and another line down here like that like that hang on a second what happened that one didn't finish drawing oh what am I doing what am I doing yeah I'm doing it here aren't I and of course that dimension line now is kind of confusing isn't it you know what if I go to the properties of this let's change the line color of this to be faint gray how does that work yeah, no, you can really see that standing out now. Well, at least that line standing out, isn't it? Okay, and yeah, let's just select and shift, select, copy, paste. And then let's just bring those into here. And of course, you could have just drawn them yourself. Whatever. Okay, all right, let's come to the... No, <laughs> let's come to the delete any. Let's go to the delete part tool now. I'm going to trim back these parts here. And I'm going to trim back these parts here. And I'm going to trim back those parts. And there you can see there's my S. Um, right, so I've, as I say, I've kept my dimensioning here and I've got my profile for my S. Um, this is almost ready now for laser cutting. There's, there's one more thing I'm going to do with this. Um, and that is I'm going to get a contour tool with a contour spacing of zero millimeters. And I'm going to come to color blue. And for our laser cutter, blue cuts, black does nothing. 
and I'm going to click on the inside edge there and I'm going to contour that S. Now, why did I do that? Well, let me just select that blue contour. Remember, I've got grid lock turned on all this time so everything snaps together. And let's just try and di dissect what's happening here. This S is made up from lots and lots of little sections. Okay, and of course, you know, I could select all, control G, group it together. That would be very bad. I'm not going to go into why now, but I wouldn't do that. I could also select it all as well. I could go to edit, I could make it into a path. Now that would be better than grouping. I'd Again, I want to say more now, but it is. Um, uh, but actually, I actually like personally keeping that as separate pieces and then literally just having this kind of this contour as actually what cuts. I, I, it works for me. It kind of breaks the design up.